So in this video, I'm going to talk about artificial inseminating female dogs. And I produced, I don't know how many years ago, I produced a video teaching new people how to do it. I bred German Shepherds for 35 years. We averaged 10 litters a year. I had a professional breeding facility. And the fact is there are some times when you can look at your female and you can progesterone test her with the help of a vet that can do that and you determine this is the day that she should be bred because the vet says that and your male won't breed her or the female will not accept the male so you have to do an artificial insemination i've probably done two or three hundred artificial inseminations now i'm talking about a live collection where i collect the male and inseminate it immediately into the female. I'm not talking about where we collect a male, freeze a semen, and then have to inseminate the female. If that's what you're t looking for, this is not the solution for you. You have to go to a vet that specializes in that. But the reason that I'm doing this video is because we used to sell a lot of these partially because of my video, partially because of the experience I had, partially because of the quality of insemination kits that we sell. But then these kits came along from China. And I'm going to tell you, I don't say this very often, but you don't want to try and deal with this stuff from China. It's just cheap. It's like they don't know what they're talking about when they're trying to put an insemination kit together. And I'll show you exactly the way that I do it with our kits. We have three kit inseminations, and we have six kit inseminations, and we have small dog and large dog. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that on your small breed, how far you should insert the insemination tube when you inject the semen into her. Talk to your vet, do your own research. There's too many breeds. now. On a German Shepherd, which is what I have my experience with, you need to inseminate or insert the tube six to nine inches. I'm just going to tell you, if you want to do that, get my video because I show you me doing it a number of different times. So with our kit, you get these sheaths that go onto a test tube with a little bit of a point on the bottom of it. The key here, which you don't have on these Chinese tubes, is I like the fact that it's a, it's a point and you think, well, why is that? Why do you care about that? You care about it because you have to, when you collect your mail, you have to use the, we have these tubes of lubricant that does not kill the semen. On the Chinese kits, they don't have this. We have two tubes on a six insemination kit. So you're gonna lubricate your mail and you're gonna have to collect your mail. It's important when you do this, we supply these little rubber bands. I'm not a fan of docking tails on sheep, but it's the kind of rubber band they use to dock the tail on a sheep. And it's a strong little rubber band. It's important when you do it, I'll show you how it goes. The sheath looks like this as compared to the Chinese version over here. Look how much bigger that is. Why is that important? Because I have to get my tube attached into the end of this sheath. And a big one, if I had to deal with this, I got a lot of extra material there that I have to squinch down and get tight around the tube. That's a pain. The Chinese kits don't even come with these little rubber bands. You could use a rubber band there, but it better be strong and it better be small. And that's why we use these. Now, the way to do it is, and I wanna be, I wanna make this very clear. To get the tube in there, I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna just slit it, make a slit in the bottom of the tube. And if, obviously, before you do all of this, you have a sterile location you're working with, you would be working with rubber gloves. One thing I don't do is supply the rubber gloves. I'd rather have you get your own rubber gloves, then you know they're sterile and not rolling around 
in a package. So now we have to get this tube in it. So this is important. We just drop it down. We have a slit there. We don't cut it off. We just have a slit that we're moving our tube through. It's very important on how you attach this little rubber tube. You roll it on and you can roll it up. And what I like to do when it's about halfway is I'll then roll it onto the over the end of the sheath so it's like that. Here's important. Don't leave it in the middle. Don't leave it down there because this is then going to fill full of semen. You don't want that. You want to get every little, little bit of semen that you can into your female. So you see what just happened there. I want to roll that up to the very end of the tube. I went too far and it popped off. Not a big deal. I'll pull it off and I'll start all over again. Once again, remember, your hands are sterile. These things are sterile. We're going to do it again so you can see. Get your tube or tubes set up before you start to collect them. So there, I'm going to get it close to the end here. And I'm going to stop it with my fingers here so it doesn't pop off. And I want to get it as close as I can to the top of the tube, like that. So I'm going to get as much of the sperm into this tube as I can. That's important. You see how that just popped off. What are you going to do over here? Let's say you buy one of these, and they're cheap. They're really cheap, but you get what you pay for. Trying to get that on there without having the correct rubber band, you're going to lose some sperm, if you get it at all. So you get that, you collect it. Once you get it collected, you can pull it off, insert it down into the bottom of the tube, and siphon it out like that. Then you'll get every bit of semen out of here that you can get. Once you have it out of there, you put some lubricant on your tube, if you have to lubricate the back of your female a little bit, you can do it with that. And then you insert it and inject it into your female. I had a really good success rate with the artificial inseminations I did over the years. But I think that if you're a breeder and if you breed more than once a year, you might want to learn how to do artificial inseminations. Don't get me wrong. Some of the things that are made in China are okay. These are not and I would not recommend buying them. They're dirt cheap, but you get what you pay for here.